Hi, and welcome to Why Do Countries Exist? So much like the episode I did on Australia's political parties, I'm going to do another one on the political parties of Austria. I think talking about foreign countries' politics is very fascinating, and I'm also recording this the day before the presidential election in the US, and it'll probably be a day or two after when I'll post this. Um, I just know a lot of people are just kind of sick of hearing US politics, so why not hear about somewhere else's politics? Although I think we all know who really is going to win the presidential election. I mean, come on. We all know Jeb Bush is going to win. But anyways, let's talk about Austrian politics. So in order for me to talk about a party in Austria, it has to have at least one member in either the National Council, the European Parliament, or one of the state parliaments. I'll explain each of these institutions starting with the National Council. The National Council is the lower house of the Austrian Parliament, with 183 members. Its members are elected usually every five years, and its members decide who the Prime Minister of Austria is, what bills and laws are passed, and is generally the most important political body in the country. The upper house of Austria's parliament, the Federation Council, is made up of members selected by the state parliaments, and is a much weaker body and doesn't seem like it's really that important. Next is the European Parliament. The European Parliament is the parliament for the EU, which Austria is a member of. Every member of the EU sends a certain number of parliamentarians to the EU parliament, based on its population, with Austria sending 19 members. Admittedly, all the parties that send members to the EU Parliament are also present in the National Council, and the EU Parliament is considered a weak institution. But I thought I'd just mention who sends how many members to the EU Parliament. Finally, there are the state parliaments, which are parliaments for the nine states of Austria. They act as the National Council, but for that individual state, with each parliament having a slightly different composition. The five parties present in the National Council are also present across the nine states, along with three other smaller parties that I'll briefly talk about at the end of the episode. So the first party I'll talk about is the Austrian People's Party, or by its German name, Osterreichi Volksparty, or the OVP. The OVP is the largest party currently in Austria, with 71 members of the National Council, making it both the largest party in the National Council, along with being the largest government party, with the Prime Minister and 11 other members of the cabinet being OVP aligned. It also sends seven members to the EU Parliament, sitting with the European People's Party, and is a part of the ruling coalition in every Austrian state, with the exception of Burgenland and Vienna. The leader of the party is Sebastian Kurz, who is also the Prime Minister. The OVP is the main center-right party in the country, with the OVP representing Austrian Conservatives and Christian Democrats. The party is considered a mostly pro-EU and pro-NATO party, supporting Austria's position within the EU and wanting to join NATO and align militarily with other Western European countries. Economically, the party can find itself having a little bit of a mixed message. On the website, they talk about raising the budget to ensure that all Austrian families can make it through the coronavirus, along with increasing funds for education, healthcare, development, and the environment, all in the name of a mixed or social market economy. But the party also has a streak of reducing taxes and red tape, including for the middle class and for companies, and have supported the privatization of water companies. The party also is supportive of increasing funds for the police and army, and strengthening security laws in Austria to try and reduce crime. The party under Kurz has moved in a more right-wing direction, wanting to reduce immigration into Austria, promoting more integration for immigrants that do come to Austria, and working to crack down on Islamist and extremist forces in the country. The OVP's partner in the coalition is the Greens, slash the Greens Alternative, or De Guren, De Guren Alternative. The Greens are the fourth largest party in parliament, but with the OVP they manage to eke out a majority in the National Council and make up an important coalition partner. The Greens have 26 seats in the National Council, along with three seats to the EU Parliament, sitting with the European Green slash European Free Alliance. Currently, six members of the cabinet are aligned with the Greens. In terms of their presence across Austria, they are present in every state parliament except for Carinthia. They also make up part of the ruling majority in Salzburg, Tyrol, Upper Austria, Vienna, and Vorarlberg. The current leader of the party is Werner Kogler, who is also the vice chancellor of Austria, and apparently gave a 12 hour speech in the National Council once. The president of Austria, Alexander van der Bellen, is also a member. The Greens are a party that, unsurprisingly, supports green politics, which means environmentalism is very important for them, along with other broadly progressive issues. Some of the Greens' main policies are reducing waste in Austria, trying to make Austria carbon neutral by 2040, and getting rid of nuclear power in Austria. They also argue for increased funding for education, oppose free trade agreements, want to reduce the cost of living, and want to increase carbon taxes. 
The party supports direct democracy, meaning more referendums. They also are pro-EU and historically have been in favor of increased immigration into the country. However, after joining the OVP in a coalition government, they've become more silent on the issue of immigration. Now we go to the opposition. The largest party in the opposition and second largest party in Austria is the Social Democratic Party of Austria, or the Social Democratische Partei Österreich, or SPO. They have 40 members in the National Council and send five members to the EU Parliament, where they sit with the Progressive Alliance of European Socialists and Democrats. The SPO is present in every state parliament and is a part of the ruling majority in six of them, Burgenland, Carinthia, Lower Austria, Styria, Upper Austria, and Vienna. The party is led by Pamela Rendi Wagner, who was formerly the Minister of Health and Women's Affairs in 2017, under an SPO and OVP coalition. The SPO is a social democratic party, making it the main center-left party in the country, although it does have some more socialist and hard left wings. The SPO supports increased pay and leisure time for workers, and increased funds for education, healthcare, and the environment. The party is another pro-EU party, supports same-sex marriage, and supports increased immigration into the country. Being a social democratic party, it is skeptical towards the free market, opposing excess of privatization, and is more supportive of social market ideas, progressive taxes, and the welfare state. The party opposes political radicalism and populism within Austria. The next largest bloc of the opposition is the Freedom Party of Austria, or the Freitheitliche Party Österreich, or FPO. It has 30 members in the National Council and says three members to the EU Parliament, where they sit with the Identity and Democracy Group. It is present in every state and makes up the ruling coalition in Lower Austria and Upper Austria. The leader of the party is Norbert Hofer, who was previously the Minister of Transport, Innovation, and Technology from 2017 to 2019 under an FPO and OVP government. The party formerly had come to represent German nationalist and quasi-libertarian ideas, but since the 80s, it has shifted to appealing to more broad populist ideals. It can be described as right-wing populist, national conservative, and nationalistic. The FPO's new political course finds it being the only major anti-EU party in the country, with it calling for reduced sanctions on Russia and wants to reduce the EU's influence in Austria. The party's main focus in recent years has been imposing increased immigration, arguing that most immigrants, particularly those from Muslim countries, are unable to properly assimilate into Austrian society and harm social cohesion. They want Austria to retain a more traditionalist character, with German as a language everyone speaks, and everyone being either Christian or hold Christian values. It also supports South Tyrol breaking off from Italy and rejoining Austria, increased environmental regulations, wants to reduce taxes, and opposes joining NATO. The last party present in the National Council is NEOS slash New Austria and Liberal Forum. It has 15 seats in the National Council, and sends just one member to the EU Parliament, who sits with the Alliance of Liberals and Democrats for Europe. Its presence in the states is limited, with it only holding seats in Lower Austria, Salzburg, Styria, Tyrol, Vienna, and Vorarlberg. Of those, it only makes up a part of the ruling majority in Salzburg. The party is led by Beata Meinerisinger. The party represents liberals, centrists, and very often, young people who dislike the traditional political structures in the country. NEOS is a pro-EU party, but its love for the EU goes a step further and actually supports what's known as EU federalism. This would be the transition of the EU from just being a collection of countries with a shared economy to a singular country with all the members of the EU becoming a part of a large European state. The party also finds itself imposing increased taxation, wanting to lower taxes across the board, and is fairly supportive of the free market. It finds most regulations to just slow business down and increase the cost of living, so it wants to reduce a lot of them, along with incentivizing businesses and startups and reducing social security. It also wants to bring in more skilled labor into the country, is supportive of same-sex marriage, wants to increase transparency, and believes in what it calls pragmatic models and methods to increase the GDP. So those are the main parties of Austria, but there are three more represented in state politics that I'll go over briefly. The first is Team Stronach, which has three members in the state parliament of Carinthia. Team Stronach is a political party based around the ideology of Frank Stronach, an Austro-Canadian businessman. Team Stronach managed in 2011 to gain 11 seats in parliament, but after the election, support for the party began to disappear, and in 2017 the party was dissolved. What remains now is just the regional branch of the party in Carinthia. The party has argued that the EU is an economically bad idea, and that the euro should be replaced by a new currency for Austria. It also has argued for a flat 25% tax in Austria, reduced social security, and ending the mandatory draft in Austria. Next is the Citizens Forum for Austria. The Citizens Forum is found in the state of Tyrol, with it holding two seats in the state parliament. The party seems to want to represent Tyrolean interests in Austria, and reduce the cost of living in the state. 
information on the party is fairly scarce, so let's just move on to the final party. Finally, we have the Communist Party of Austria, or the KPO which is two seats in the state parliament of Styria. The KPO is probably one of the oldest parties in Austria, with it being formed in 1918 and contesting every election since World War II. They did manage to win a couple seats in the 40s and 50s, but haven't been represented in Austria's parliament since 1959. The party managed to win seats in Styria after years of being practically irrelevant in Austria due to the decline of the SPO in the city of Graz, which let the KPO become the main left-wing party in the city. The party is further left than either the Greens or the SPO, with it opposing capitalism, the free market, and privatization. The KPO also supports increased environmental regulations, opposes the EU and NATO, and wants to decrease the cost of living in the country. The KPO has historically been a party that has seen many shifts ideologically, with Marxist-Leninist, Euro-Communist, Anarcho-Communist, Revolutionary Socialist, and other colorful Marxist movements all being present in the party. So those are the political parties in Austria. I hope my German was at least okay. Um, I hope it wasn't too blindingly obvious that I don't speak it at all. Uh, my next video is going to be the history of Azerbaijan. I imagine that'll be interesting to research, especially with the conflict going on right now. Um, I'd initially thought about doing just a whole episode on the conflict that's going on right now, but I figured I can just talk about it in the Azerbaijan episode, since Azerbaijan is such an important player, as you probably obviously know. I imagine finding information on what is actually going on is going to be a nightmare, considering how much propaganda is being kind of talked about by both sides, but... Hopefully I can get fairly accurate and interesting information out on it. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed listening. My email is whydocountriesexist at gmail.com for if you want to send your thoughts, comments, suggestions, or hate mail. Thank you. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day.